Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, not sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Good afternoon. Today is the 11th of November, and this is part five of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2022 Classic Motor Show at the NEC, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. This is Hall 8. Um, this is the third part we've actually been in Hall 8, um, mainly Fords, but some other things in here as well. And we do need to finish off in here before we move on, uh, probably into Hall 4. So this is the um, Ford Motorsport stand, and I've got a few Escort 1300 Sports in here. It's not a model I'm very familiar with. I think by this stage, the Mark 1 Escort had been facelifted, although I'm really struggling to tell the pre and post facelift Mark 1 Escorts apart. I tried on some 1300Es and I totally failed. So if anybody can tell me what the difference between a pre and post facelift um, Mark 1 Escort actually is, I'd be very grateful in the comments section. But yes, I've never heard of the 1300 Sports Mark 1 before. And here are some, they're all on I think 1973 plates, judging by there's L and M ones, so it must be a limited production one. But, oh, maybe that, that's what it is. This one's, this one's not got a black rear panel, and these two have. Maybe that's the difference. Um, but yeah, answer the comment section below. Just think sort of 70s colour, this sort of green, and oh, someone's left the open window so I can have a look at the interior. There we go. Very black. I mean, people talk about modern cars having really black interiors, and that's completely true, but. In the 70s, it seemed that a lot of cars had them too. So just the uh, 1.3 Kent engine, I think, in there. Um, was it the Crosto? I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm very bad at this sort of thing, unfortunately. Because, um, someone else will have to fill you in the exact details of these things. There we go, the Escort Sport. Black PVC is the standard upholstery material, but there is a choice of cloth trim at extra cost. Something I'm a bit more familiar with is the uh, RS2000s and Mark IIs. I don't think I'd see here a, uh, a white one, as in the Professionals, but 1976 car. Um, but I do see a couple on T plates, so 78 to 79 on these. And um, the fake plate that was used for falling the Professionals was actually on a T. So um, I suppose that's one thing. I thought all the interiors of these were black, but they're not. Um, there are some that are sort of like a sort of brick red. That one's sort of like a brick red interior. This one's kind of like a brown interior. So clearly they didn't just make black interiors of these. There were other colours available. And uh, here's another one on a different style. Actually, two more. Yeah, these are worth an awful lot of money these days. Oh, there we go. There's one that's... Um, bit like it although the actual four badge like that marks these cars out as post facelift ones and of course the one of the professionals was a pre facelift one that had a different badge on it so yeah 77 78 this one's got some modified bodywork on it i don't know what this is oh an x-pack is of course same 77 78 you could have your bolting arches like you could on the uh Mark II Capri X Pack, which was uh, also featured professionals. VX that might have actually been owned by Ford themselves. Essex plate. RS Cosworth here. That's what RS Cosworth. This would be 92, 93. Red to the early one. Pre airbag steering wheel. Again, as always, I say with these, it's based on a Sierra platform. That's why the engine is actually mounted the other way around from the standard Mark V Escorts. Like this, in fact. There you go. That's a good representation there. Um, so this one's uh, two-wheel drive Sapphire Cosworth. Did it tell you the actual... Yeah, this is no, not quite. Um, so, yeah, 8990. Series 1 RS Turbo Escort here. But as someone very correctly points out... Mark III Escort, the Series 1 RS Turbo. Um, they only made these near the end of Mark III Escort production. And then, of course, when the Mark IV came out, they uh, went to the Series 2s. 
uh, on a C plate there, so yeah, 85, 86 registration. 2000 Sport, again, I'm not a type of Escort I'm familiar with actually. I'm uh, sort of learning a lot today about these. Valafic has had a modified engine put in it, there we go, you can see it's an NMS on the top, so South African import, okay, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? There we go, Ford Motor Company of South Africa are on that the build plate there. I'm up to uh, Mexico, I think we said a, a 1.6 engine, these ones. But again, if, <laughs> like all these Mark 1 and Mark 2 Escort, particularly for two doors, I don't think I've actually seen a four door one today. Um, they're very, very valuable indeed these days. Yeah, 1.6, I was right. So we've got some uh, Ford vans here. Um, that looks like an economy line, yes it is, um, from the United States. Looks like the van used in Diamonds Are Forever, actually. But, but I think they used a economy line, that was driven by, oh gosh, it's in the actor. Um, I can't remember the name of the actor now who drove it. I forget now. It's been a long time since I've seen that. Vanderberg's Fire Service. It's a private fire engine based on a Mark II Transit. Yeah, I suppose it is. There we go. Um, part of Unilever. Okay, that's interesting. So yeah, private fire service. Now Mark. What? Mark one Transit here, but has the longer nose. So does that mean it's a V60? I hope so, because if it's not, it'll be the uh, diesel version. And uh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. This one, however, this bus, um, that is standard, I think. I can't remember if these use the Essex or Taunus V4 engines. I think it was both of them, actually, um, from what I remember. I can't remember now. Um, the later ones started to be built in Southampton, actually. They were built there until 2013. But this could have been built um, possibly in uh, Langley, which is near Slough. It's not a bus wheel. It's like a big delivery van type thing. Interesting. I guess it would come a walk through. Um, County 4x4 Transit Mark II. It's had a Cosworth engine put it. That <laughs> must be an interesting thing, that. That uh, must be fascinating to drive. Uh, more Connor Lionel E Series stuff going on here. Um, oh, no, it's not it's a Chevy van. Yes, I said there were going to be other things like forwards in here, because, and I was absolutely correct. So that one's around 1990. What's that thing at the back there? Another Chevy van. Wonders never cease. Um, what have we got here? Capri action. Yes, we did use these in the police force years. Uh, this is a very late Mark III Capri. I um, wonder if this is an injection. Probably is actually. Don't mind the interior and also the uh, RS wheels on this one. Yes, it is an injection special. Probably uses a motorway car to catch. Uh, Miscreants, so yes, about 1887. Oh, the uh, Mark 1 Mark 2 Granada driver's skills. Yes, yes, we love Mark 1 and Mark 2 Granadas. Um, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Colden Rubbish Mechanic um, owns a very, very nice 1982 Granada Mark 2 2.8 Gear X Estate, which has been on the channel a couple of times and it's the most prominent car on his one as well. I think we've got some uh, V6 Cologne action happening here as well. We certainly do. I wonder what specifications. It looks very much like a gear. Normally tell by the dash actually. That's 2.3 GL. Wow, it's not a gear. This is interesting. And hello to uh, Reese. 2023 on Instagram. Uh, so this is pre facelift Mark II, again a 2.3 GL, which I must have decided that they're going to bring out the sort of rarer variants this time um, rather than just have tons and tons of gear and gear access because most of the um, 
most of the Mark II Granadas I've seen are, are gears and gear access the ones that survive, and they tend to be post facelift. So 84, 85, this one's 79 to 80 with a vinyl roof. Let's have a look at some Mark I Granadas now, since we're here. Ooh, yes, all the coupes in this country were three litre gears. Some were manual, like this one, some were automatic. In other countries you could get other engines and other trim levels, but all of them in this country were three litre gears for the coupes. Very, very, very nice condition, of course. You don't expect anything else at BBC, would you? And we've got a, a two litre GL 1976 with facelifted um, Mark I Granada here. Again, yeah, they've, they've chosen some of the rarer variants this year to come, and I'm grateful that they have because uh, I'm enjoying this very much. Brown and brown and bronze and brown and bronze and brown and brown. Those are the correct wheels for these as well, actually. Ooh, we've got a thing, actually, view. This isn't not at all. Yeah, it's a really, really late. Oh no, uh, sorry, this is, it looks like a console, it's actually a Granada, but it's um, a sort of low spec one. I do apologise for you, we get confused and things like that, so it's a, it's a 76. Um, it looks a bit like it's a console, console with lower spec ones, but there we go. It's a very nice specification one, isn't it? And yeah, we've got the earlier style hub caps on these the fog laps on the back as well I should know how to tell between the Granada and the console now should my viewers but uh, let's get out of here ooh it's Fiesta RS Turbo got green stripes that's very nice are those are original plates as well it's Alberton in uh, North London yeah if you didn't get enough power with uh, the, the XR2i, you could have even more of the RS Turbo. These are just incredibly wonderful looking cars of the period, aren't they? Uh, another Mark II Escort RS Mexico here. On a piece, so this will be the pre facelift one. Uh, 75 76 registration. Yeah, you can see, um, unlike the later ones, it just has a full lettering rather than the uh, sort of oval badge on it. The Veraris Cosworth VW, possibly owned by for themselves originally, I don't know. So it's a slightly later one with the uh, driver's airbag. Oz Racing Wheels. Uh, 93, 94 registration, this one. Right, let's... Uh, Go around and find some more to sort of taste a treat, shall we? So today we've already looked at some XR4x4s and XR4Is. Uh, now we're going to look at some Sierra Cosworth hatches, RS500s and things. Completely different rear side window profile from the XR4i, for example. Why Ford did this, I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> really, really don't know. Um, yeah, limited edition of 500 cars. I think they were made in 86 and 87. I could be wrong. It could just have been 87. I'm not um, sure actually now. I've come to think of it. But, you know, very successful in competition until well, well after um, the end of production for uh, the RS500s. There we go, there's that different treatment. That's a road car there, got two of them. And that's what the interior looked like on the centre ones. Right, let's uh, find some more Fords. So the Ford Model Y and Ford Model C register, uh, they were made between 32 and 37. There we go, I've learned something today. Um, very familiar looking thing, and if you've ever seen those very old 30s films, you do see these in those but apart from that I have not seen many at all is this a Model C yes it is I've never seen a Model C before in my life years and 
the new one is, uh, registered in 1935. And then the ones later on with the side valve cars, uh, for example, this Ford Prefect, the E493A type, but only made in formal form in this country. I don't know the exact year of this, but it's clearly been very much cherished as a wedding car region um, already. 1961 Ford Thames 300E van. Yes, they made these a bit later um, than the rest of the 100 E's uh, range, rather like uh, with the um, two door, which was the sort of four door, which was popular. And this is one of these really old um, Thames van, isn't it? Yeah, very old sort of early 50s I think Reckon 38 Ford 7Y8 Saloon Wow so This would be one of the sort of early ones of that shape I think the last one was a popular it was about 1959 just continued as a prefect Let's have a look this one actually might be a popular I don't know That's uh, a Ford product. Right, well, we're sort of tripping over. I'm not going to know on the photos, but there we go. There's the engine bay and things. Let's have a look um, at some Ford Corsairs. Come back to that stuff later. I don't know why they're <laughs> sort of wrapping them up in newspaper. It's really strange. I've been trying to work out why. I just can't work it out at all. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's so they don't get wet. Um, but there we go. That was the, the closing ceremony where they appeared in. These are all uh, Crayford Corsairs, actually, all these. Um, we'll have a look at some more Crayford products in a bit. Um, here's a Corsair GT. Now, is this just straight forward? Yeah, it's not a, not a V4 engine. Yeah, this is the um, straight forward. I can't remember why they developed the, um, the Essex V4 engine now. I can't Get why they did that, but um, there we go. And two door as well. They're really just not as popular on the on the classic car series on like a Cortina. I don't really know why Corsairs. I've never really worked that out. Anyway, let's look at some console capris. Um, I don't think this is a real thing. I think the badges have been just added on. Uh, I don't think we ever made it officially a uh, Lotus console capri. It looks great though, which we should have done. There we go, there's the Lotus engine and everything, which fits straight in. Um, and here's a console classic. The console Capri and console classic were a real failure for Ford of Britain. Um, when they were launched in 61, they were just very much at the time in terms of the styling, looking like a sort of, you know, 59, I think Lincoln, they were, they were based on the styling. This, particularly on the classics with this uh, sort of reverse window. Now, you could get, as you can see here, both four-door and two-door classics. Earlier ones um, had a 1340cc engine, later ones a 1500. And uh, here's Consul Capri. I I've always seen on shows more of these more of these Capris than I do of the classics. So typical kind of late 50s style interior, with umbrella handbrake and column change and all kinds of things like that. Very beautiful styling, but very, very prone to rust, like so many cars of the era, unfortunately. Possibly owned by Ford themselves, um, WC, Kent, uh, sorry, Essex registration. And then we can have a look at some Ford Townesses. The Ford Townes um, range was very, very, very confusing because they made two completely different cars, depending on the numbers after the name Townes, depending on actually kind of you know, what the car actually was. This is a, one of the larger ones. And uh, this is a J, so 70 to 71. I imagine this is probably like, I don't know, South African import or something like that. It wouldn't have been originally sold over here. There we go. Yeah, Thomas 20M RS. Very nice. And um, until, I think it's right until 1982, what we knew as the, the Cortina 
was um, barristers for towners, Mark 3, 4, 5, Cortina, boards for towners in lots of other markets like this. So very similar to a Mark, Mark 4, Cortina, but a left-hand drive. And I think those wheels are off the of Sierra, as far as I remember. And here is a Taunus uh, 12 MP4. This originally was going to be called the Ford Cardinal, I think, of it, the, uh, the design. And I think it was offered to Ford of Britain, but Ford of Germany took it. So I think that's the way it is. I, I forget now. Uh, it's very confusing, the differences between Ford of Britain and Ford of Germany. Uh, so this is a 64. I, I haven't seen one of these for years. Years and years and years. Um, but it's a delight, isn't it? So, I've um, got some Crayford convertibles here. The most relevant one probably to the rest of the hall is this uh, Cortina Mark V convertible. This is actually an automatic as well. They did make a uh, two-door Mark V Cortina. I think it was only available with 1.3 1.6 engines normally. But of course they, uh, they could obviously use a shell to make something a bit more interesting. And uh, this is a 2.3. Um, coach book by Car Bodies, but I imagine Crayford designed it. Fascinating looking car. The rear leg green though is shockingly bad. I don't think I've ever seen one of these before. It's rather like the uh, Mark II Cavalier convertibles that were a bit later. Um, just don't see them. And this Wolseley Hornet here, 1966, made for a tie in um, with. Uh, the British Heinz Company and one of 57 produced of course yeah we know why 1981 Austin Mini Metro S Metropolitan prototype and of course in the K9 and Company special the spin-off Doctor Who in 81 um, you did see one of these I think so yeah I'd I don't know how this has survived. That's uh, pretty amazing, really. Right, some Ford Model A's. Um, can't say I know much about these. This is a 1930 Phaeton. What's for sales? Mr. Bill from the Fuel Power Channel says this car could be yours. Um, 1931 slat window town car, imported from the United States of America. That makes perfect sense. I think. Initially, Ford's in this country built in Manchester, but later Dagenham, of course. 1931, Tudor Saloon. Is that because it's just got two doors on it, viewers? It was assembled and imported from Denmark. Fascinating. What have we got round the other side? Oh, we've seen that. Right, viewers, I think we've actually finished this hall. So let's go up and uh, start in Hall 4. There's plenty up there. On the way to... Um, ran out of the way on the way to uh, Hall 4 there's a selection of classic uh, racing cars here this one looks like a Vauxhall Forenza uh, 7172 plate and it's got a 302 cubic inch Chevrolet engine in it I bet that's interesting to drive Escort RS2000, of course. A facelifted one because of the badge. Lancia Stratos. I wonder if this is an actual genuine Stratos. I've known it's not a Hawk Stratos, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's Hawk cars on it. I'm still looking for that genuine Stratos view. It must be one here somewhere. Uh, Alfa Romeo 155. I think it's Gabriele Tarquini who drove one of these in the 90s in the Touring Car Championship. And then we've got a Lotus Sunbeam. Sunbeam Lotus. I always, I always get it the wrong way around. Um, I want to say the gentleman there who owns it is actually wearing a jacket to Sunbeam Lotus. So it's a Sunbeam Lotus. There we go. Top of Sunbeam Lotus. Despite the fact it's got the Chrysler Pentastar still on it. And this is one of the earlier ones with the, the headlamps aren't flush. Uh, what's that on a T, so about 79, about 79. And then an Ore Quattro, these classic Audis. So, pretty interesting. Right, um, 
So we are four four. This is the Austin Ten Owners Club, um, specifically cars made between 1931 and 1939. I can't say I know an awful lot about these cars, dears, but let's have a look. It's huge for Austin Twenty Mayfair limousine. So they clearly weren't just making little things like the. Um, I think that's a ten there. Um, and the seven, they were making big sort of imperious looking things like this. So six cylinder engine. It's a massive car that, huge car. Before the Member 7, Austin were known for luxury cars, so it's maybe not a surprise particularly. And this one is a 10-4 Clifton Tour, 1935. Information sheets are always very much appreciated by people like me viewers. Um, only 33 Austin 10-4 Open Road. Uh, you can see it's got four doors, the sort of uh, ones at the back are actually kind of uh, suicide doors. This will be a uh, little saloon, there's um, one of these I've seen sometimes at certain events. I don't know if this is the same one, it was this colour I when I saw. The ghost Austin 10 Litchfield saloon. This one here, what's this one? Got a fabric roof on it. Uh, it's 2034 Austin 10 four door saloon deluxe. Excellent. Oh, what's this? It's been anything to do with uh, Mr. Honda from Jeff Buys Cars for it. <laughs> yes, it would be. Yeah, he's here. Of course, he is. It's made this to sort of look. A bit, uh, a bit different, doesn't he? Yes, of course he's here. I think this car's been featured on his channel before in terms of uh, doing it up and things, but uh, he's managed to get himself a stand at the last minute like he always does. Maybe I do go and see Mr Hunter at some point soon. Right. Um, so we've got here 1935 Austin 7 Hamblin Special. I've never seen one of these before. Can I even get in this? Ooh, I don't know. Oh my gosh, is that a seat? <laughs> oh, that doesn't look very comfortable. Oh, it's a very early seven here. Uh, 23. Seven maybe Chummy Tora. Gosh, this is 99 years old, this car, viewers. It's not the oldest car we've seen at the show so far. There is an 1899 Fiat here, but that's pretty old. Appreciate the information sheets, viewers. Um, they do help out. Only 37, 36, Austin 7 Ruby. That's one of the nicer models, I think, of with my eyes for Rubies. Don't see the Swallow Saloon here. Maybe there isn't one of these here this time. Uh, 1932 RN Saloon. This will be an earlier one because the lights aren't even on the wings in this one. 1927, Austin 7R type saloon. So what's this actual car here? Does it, does it have an information sheet, this one? It's been an early one. Maybe this one actually is a 22, I don't know. That. Oh, we do have a Swallow Sports Coupe, registered in 1931. So William Lyons, of course, founded the Jaguar. This is what he, uh, this is what he got to before he um, founded that uh, company that originally called SS Cars. Obviously, they changed the name after the war for very obvious reasons. Right, let's have a little look at uh, one more stand, viewers, and then we will finish part five here and go to part six. We do like this view. Uh, this is the Midland Vehicle Preservation Society stand. Here is this uh, Honda Prelude. I think this is a third generation Prelude. Yes, it is. Uh, this registered in 1988. It's the 2 litre 16 valve EXI four wheel steering coupe. Yes, we like four wheel steering views. We like this sort of thing. 
That's very tasty here. It's a manual as well. I've actually driven one of these many, many years ago. I drove it probably around kind of 2005, 2006. I only drove it about 200 yards, but it was, it was pretty good. Um, 1936 MGTA. It's very nice. Early T-Type. And a Riley 1.5 as well. That's also very nice. Um, bikes, mm, I'm not sure we're going to be looking at bikes shoes because I don't know anything about them. So uh, it's even worse commentary than usual. So yes, um, thank you so much indeed once again for watching uh, part five of the slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2022 NEC Classic Motor Show. Um, And don't forget to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment below, and we'll see you soon for more inaccurate information. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts, and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below.